G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Welcome to the new patch and welcome to the Saab J37 Vingen. Well, it's really the JA37C, but who cares? It's a Vingen and it's got some pretty damn good armament, some pretty damn good characteristics and some pretty damn good performance. So, the JA37 is pretty much brand new to War Thunder's tech trees in uh, Sweden, of course, and is, uh, yeah, pretty damn good. It's got canards, like, it's got to be good if it has canards, right? Surely, yes. It's got a delta wing, it's got a uh, nice cannon, it's got six missiles, and uh, two of those can be sky flashes. So, who's, who's really complaining here? Well, just the enemies, I suppose. This plane is really damn good and is actually one of my new favourites for the patch. I've done really well so far in the Vigan, and I hope to play it a little bit more just to sort of uh, figure out the ins and outs of it a little bit better. This first match here I'm going to show you, I'm pretty much just going to show you the dogfighting capabilities of this plane and the ability it has to just sort of low speed turn and burn. It is similar to the Draken in the way that it has uh, fairly high AOA and of course it does um, suffer from that ability or that inability to gain that speed back super quick but of course that's kind of the trade-off you have when you do pull so damn hard. The Vigan is one of those planes that is sort of not quite in that interceptor role but it is certainly uh, more of a dogfighter than a missile carrier or an interceptor or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I do really really like this plane and uh, of course, this is filmed before the fuel bug was fixed, so I'm going to go without the afterburner for a little bit, but of course, I would highly recommend that everyone uses the afterburner at every possible opportunity, because more thrust is always better. So, I'm just going to go here at not quite sea level or ground level, uh, but I am going to come across and try and find some low-flying targets that I can pulse Doppler. I, funnily enough, haven't got the pulse Doppler mode switched on, uh, but this plane does have a pulse Doppler radar, which allows the, I'm going to call them sky flashes, but I think they're like RB-71s or something like that. The uh, sky flashes, it allows them to pretty much uh, work like flawlessly. So you have plenty of opportunities there to use the sky flashes. I am trying to use the uh, little searchy bit of the radar to locate a target, and I found one, but unfortunately it's uh, no dice from the sky flash there. He comes in super close, and it's a MiG-21 MF. I'm going to go straight to the dogfight, because I didn't see these two targets popping up, but it's very, very good that I did, because now I have myself a fairly intense dogfight on my hands, and I don't have to deal with an AIM-9G up my bum. So. M MiG-21 MF is looking like a fairly decent target. I'm overleading like hell, but that's only because I'm used to the MiG-21 or the MiG-23. Uh, MiG so, I'm going to go for a bit more guns here, but unfortunately I'm not able to pull up in time. And you can see what is happening when I talk about the inability of this plane to gain back its speed super quickly, simply because of the high AOA. Now, it is time for another Pulse Doppler moment, and you can see that uh, Pulse Doppler, when it's not red, the, uh, the missile reticle, it means it's not going to make its way towards the target. And there we go, there's our another missile, and I don't... There we go, it's finally made its way to the target. Now, MiG-21 MF comes in, of course, using flares. This thing does have flares and chaff, so you do have plenty of opportunities there to run away from missiles that have radar locking capabilities or semi-active radar homing missiles. But just have a look at how easily I am able to deal with this dogfight. This plane has some really really strange characteristics and when you combine that with a team that actually functions you can really just do whatever the hell you want and kind of get away with it which makes me really really happy um, although in that sense you do pay a very very heavy price and that price is speed you can sort of outmaneuver your opponents to a degree that makes this thing beneficial to do that sort of dogfighting in. Of course, you don't want to be dogfighting when you have multiple enemies around and when you're limited on uh, friends or, or friendlies or something like that. Uh, I guess maybe meat shields if you want to call them that. But either way, this thing doesn't really take nicely to those multiple engagement situations. Of course, it doesn't take nicely to MiG-23s jumping into their territory because a quick barrage of uh, machine gun or cannon is just enough to subdue such a uh, such an adventurous soul. So, we're going to go again, going for that high AOA turn, which the Vigan can really do. And um, my god, this thing is just such a capable machine. It's just able to do it's able to do many of the things. So it's just it's just really fun. And I think it is very much worth the uh, the grind at the moment. Top tier is, of course, kind of hard to grind through, but my god, 
I think this one is worth it. Now, if you have a look on the radar, you'll notice that I have done a boo-boo here by taking, uh, paying attention to the chat. And of course, we have the opening sequence from this video. God, I find that so irritating that uh, an FG1 does all, it's all the things right except for overshooting and uh, still manages to die to an AIM-9J. I find the AIM-9J is really, really strong. Uh, perhaps a little bit too strong at the moment. It's just the way they are. They seem to not quite ignore flares, but they're not really phased by flares. And of course, they pull quite hard and fast. And they're very, very good missiles overall. Whereas things like the R60s, I think there's a fair amount left to be desired there. They have uh, such a high affinity for flares that it makes it really, really frustrating to fly. Now, on to the main event. We have here a map that is uh, kind of same-same, to be honest. I find most of these ARB maps tend to be a little bit same-same, but uh, this one at least has a few different targets, but we're not really going to be bothering with these targets. Of course, the targets we want are currently on the airfield. They are the enemy planes. No, it's not the AAA, but I wish we could. Gaijin, when are we going to get Seed? Maybe. Maybe someday. Maybe someday soon. So, we are pretty much going to look for our targets the same way that we did last time, but in this case, I don't really think that... Um, I don't really think that uh, involving yourself in super intense dogfights all the time is going to be good for your heart rate. So the Vigan here is uh, picking up a fair bit of speed here off the runway. It is okay at those lower altitudes. I haven't tested it at higher altitudes in terms of its uh, acceleration. I know that the Draken has really bad acceleration at those lower altitudes, where, sorry, those higher altitudes where other planes really leave it in the dust. You'll find yourself, if you somehow manage to go back to being subsonic in the Draken at higher altitudes, you'll find that you kind of stay that way for a fair while until you're able to build up your speed once more. But the uh, the Vigan, I'm not entirely sure. I know it does have a whopping climb rate, uh, but I really wouldn't be using this thing at altitude exclusively. Personally, I would be that person to sort of sit on the periphery of the dogfights, maybe pick out the one or the two that are... Uh, looking like they're on the periphery and then working your way in progressively. I don't really like involving myself in furballs as such because it's really hard to keep tabs on your opponents, especially when the minimap has a lot of those uh, ground targets that are cluttering up the spots where those AI or sorry where those players would otherwise be. So I have spotted the dot and I'm making my way towards said dot. Hopefully I can get myself a kill, and hopefully this dot turns out to be paying not attention, therefore he will be paying repair cost instead. So, I'm turning my attention briefly to this particular target here, and I've spotted one up uh, at altitude. There's going to be a really, really nice RB71, I think it is, Skyflash moment here, and uh, a beautiful connection there to an F5C that wasn't paying attention, and like I said, now pays a repair cost subsequently. MiG-23 or MiG-27 is uh, coming around, and I didn't even know where this guy came from, but it's okay because we're in a Vigan, and the Vigan has extremely good turning capabilities, but thank you to my team. They are actually on the ball here, and they managed to take out the MiG-27. So we also have a MiG-23 who is also looking towards the booty and is therefore going to be set upon by my team. Now, as a little bit of a favor, I'm going to return the favor with an AIM-9J towards this Phantom, and that is going to land nice and not true. Yes, of course, it's going to land true because it's an AIM-9J. So, once we're done looking for those targets, it's time once again to switch and uh, have a look at the battlefield. If you can take some time to look at how the battle is panning out around you, you can get a better sense of how your plane is best going to fit into that type of thing. I've seen the Vigan as more of an interceptor type plane at the moment, but of course as you manage to wean down the numbers you can afford to turn with more and more of the planes, so you can actually turn this thing into a bit more of a dogfighter. That being said, I probably wouldn't take this thing up against things like an F5 or a MiG-21, uh, MiG-27 maybe, a MiG-23 maybe, uh, and of course Phantoms, you can eat your heart out with those. So. The F5 is looking towards me and is looking to come in. I'm going to put myself up a little bit, pitch up a touch, and see if I can make myself useful in the furball that is ensuing in front of me. There's an SU-17 that looks very, very juicy, but unfortunately he is not quite lining himself up right and is a little bit too fast for my liking. So I'm going to roll around and perhaps enjoy the F5 as, uh, as my next morsel. But no, I'm going to be enjoying my uh, my tasty SU-17, which is it's not mine anymore. 
it's someone else's. So back to the F5 it is, switching targets, and it looks like the J35 has got this guy pretty much down pat, so should I really bother with him? Probably not. My thoughts are probably should go and help out with the MiG-23 and the uh, Su-17. And of course, I decide no because I'm greedy and the F5C crashes into the ground, which is just exactly what everyone wanted, of course. So, our final remaining targets here, Su-17 and MiG-23, and there is a plane that is in a bit of trouble, so we have to be uh, pretty quick. We have to start making our way downtown and uh, definitely walking fast. F4EJ is not going to be a happy chappy if he ends up getting shot down by this guy, but unfortunately I think that is pretty much what is on the cards here if I cannot make this kill very quickly. The F4EJ manages to bite the dust, and the Su-17 is looking very much in the mood for an AIM-9J. MiG-23 is going to come in next, of course going to go for the quick head-on, critical hit, and with the MiG-23 if you damage the outside of the wings, it is pretty much a done deal. So, there's a couple of nice little kills there, and the MiG-27, almost said MiG-17, is uh, really looking juicy and is interested in my booty as well, so I have to be following that guy, but then I notice my fuel. And this is another issue that you have with the uh, Vigan. Its fuel consumption is insane, and to take a competitive amount of fuel, you're basically going to have to take between 30 and 40 minutes of fuel. And that's a lot of weight that you're carrying on your plane. So you have to ma manage your fuel load and you have to almost, at some points, manage your afterburner and manage your uh, sort of fuel levels. Maybe if you're going to pick a higher level of fuel, avoid dogfighting uh, initially. Or if you're going to pick a lower amount of fuel, make sure you keep tabs on it because it's one of those planes that does run out of fuel very quickly. Um, that was a very classic case with the MiG-21s and the Mirages, actually. If you took 30 minutes of fuel, you were pretty much not competitive, but if you took uh, 20 minutes of fuel, you would be pretty much wanting to go back to the airfield every 5 or 7 minutes. So you have to play that balancing game, and you have to make sure that you can pretty much sort out your eggs before they decide to come knocking. I don't know where that phrase came from, but I'm probably never going to say that again out of embarrassment. So, the JA-37C, is it a plane that is worth getting? I would say absolutely yes. Is it flavor of the month? I, uh, close. Is it the best jet at the moment? I don't really think so. For that, I would probably hand it to the EJ Kai or the F4E. I still have to have a look at those, but uh, as a preliminary, you know, thoughts or something, maybe it's a hot take, maybe I'll get it wrong, like I have pretty much every other take on the uh, on the dev server and early on in patches, but uh, overall, I hope everyone's been enjoying this patch, because I've actually been having a lot of fun, and I've been relaxed quite a lot playing this particular patch. It's been fairly good, and everything seems fairly well balanced. Of course, if you want to avoid the sky flashes, you can always notch, uh, and you've got flares and chaff in uh, most of your vehicles at top tier. Of course, I do think Russia is uh, not doing so hot at the moment, despite having R60Ms on the MiG-23. I do think these planes are a little bit lacking, and that might just be down to the way that uh, the Russians really design their aircraft and their um, weapon systems, if you will. Russia seems to be uh, not that great, let's say, at designing weapons, which is why they get the more modern fighters, like the MiG-23 and, of course, the uh, MiG-21 BIS. These planes are pretty much on par with the uh, F4E, the JA-37, with the exception of, I would say very, very slightly, with the missiles. But uh, that's pretty much where it ends. These planes are very, very close in their performance. And so I think top tier at the moment is actually in a fairly decent place. So it's been a fairly good ride so far. As long as Gaijin manages to sort out the bugs and sort out a couple of little issues, uh, I think we're going to have our hands on a very, very solid level of top tier. I do find myself being juked by the spotting system every now and then. I find that some people manage to get within three kilometers, um, despite me looking in that area previously, and nothing really showing up. So I do think there is a little bit of work regarding the spotting system that needs to be addressed, um, but that's something that I've been harping on for a long, long time and hasn't really changed. So I don't really know if that's going to be something that improves, but that is something that I would definitely like to see improved. So. Our final kill here is going to be the MiG-27. It's going to be a beautiful pulse Doppler moment once again with the sky flash here. Have a look at the way that that thing tracks. I didn't even have to fire the second sky flash, and I get myself a very nice juicy ace. So, the message in the Vigan, stay fast, 
definitely do not use altitude. Do not rely on your altitude. Rely on that pulse Doppler radar. And of course, you have plenty of good weapons and uh, plenty of good dogfighting capability. So always thin the numbers where you can and then go for the dogfights. So ladies and gents, that is the Saab JA-37C Vigan. This plane has come to the game with a lot of hype and honestly, it is definitely living up to that hype. It's one of those planes that is really really strong and despite it only having six missiles i think it is going to fit the game pretty much perfectly ladies and gentlemen i would just like to take this moment to thank everybody for supporting the channel i know i'm not uploading as much as i would like to but i am trying to get myself back on the grind for a few more subscribers i really want to boost that number and of course thank you all for watching thank you all for supporting the channel air models patreon merch, everything like that. If you want to support me, all down in the description below. But of course, until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.